Here we go. I'm talking about game management today. I'm Justin McBride, and it's not going to be a, just a whole broad level of game management, but it's going to be within some specific areas of what I want to talk about. And let's start, I'm going to start off with descent. And there's two categories of descent, and they're going to be met with different responses. I'm going to start off with the category of public, personal, and provocative. And that is really the key when a caution needs to be issued pretty much on the first time that you hear of it, see it. That's when the caution needs to be issued pretty much right away. Because that is degrading to the game. It's something that we don't want in the game and it needs to be taken care of. So that's the easy one. If it's public, personal, and provocative, it goes to caution right away. Now I'm going to talk about more of the private dissent, where it's directed at the referee. Really, maybe the referee is the only one that's going to hear it. Maybe, possibly, a few players around. So how do you deal with that? I wouldn't recommend going to caution right away. And I would say don't go to caution right away. I'm going to do a six-tiered response. The first two times, I'm going to completely ignore it. I might give a little hand gesture like point, stop, but for the most part, I'm completely ignoring it. The third time, I'm going to acknowledge it. Hey, number three, let's not do that anymore. The fourth and fifth time are the more, hey, stop. At the fifth time, it's no more. Number three, I've had enough. Something to that effect. The sixth time, I'm going to the caution. And yes, just because it's not public, personal, and provocative doesn't mean it's not dissent and it needs to be dealt with. So I would say use that six tiered response. You're building up to the caution itself. So that's what I have to say about dissent. Now the other side note is when does dissent become insulting language? And there's a wide variety of interpretations of that. Personally, it would take a whole lot for me to send somebody off with a red, giving them a red card for insulting language. It would take a lot. They would have to actually earn that, per se. It would have to be a pretty good personal attack on me as the referee for me to even send the little comments, how much are you getting paid? To me, that's still in the dissent category. Now, if it's continual, maybe we could, you could make an argument of insulting. The only time... I, I've actually sent someone off in a scrimmage for insulting language when they actually launched a personal attack. It was referee, you do not know what you are doing, you do not know the laws of the game, you have no business being out on a soccer field. Loud, everybody heard it. I sent them off. Could you still go to send? Yes. He was older, he knew what he was doing, can that be insulting? Yes, that definitely can be insulting. So I would say, let's get, he's done at that point. Now, would I recommend that in a U14, U12 game? Probably not. In the upper age groups, I could see that. That was a U14 game that I actually did that. It was a scrimmage. I probably won't do that again with that case, but you can. Now, 
I'm going to go switch gears and now we're going to talk about misconduct, but not what all the misconducts are. I'm talking about 100% misconduct and not talking yourself out of giving a caution or a send-off when it is 100% misconduct. A lot of times I try to, I hear the refer, hear referees trying to talk themselves down of giving a caution when it's required by the laws of the game. Does the game really need it at this point? When am I going to get? No, when it is a required caution or a required send-off, you're going to need to give it. And don't look at it as, I, I'm making a decision. Look at it as, I'm reacting to behavior that is exhibited by this player. Look at it as the laws of the game say this behavior is met with this. And I'm just doing what the laws of the game say. That's the way to look at it. So that way you're not going to talk yourself out of a caution that is required by the laws of the game. For instance, the referee calls a foul against your team. You don't agree. You pick the ball up and toss it away. And meaning picking and picking it up, not kicking, picking it up and throwing it. That is a caution. That is required by the laws of the game to caution at that point. The next example of a caution that I've seen one. I've seen the player do it once and I've seen in a youth match and I saw the player not get caution. Taking his jersey off and waving it around, running up to celebrate a goal. That is a required caution. Don't do that kind of stuff. Don't cock yourself out of giving the caution in that point because that's required by the laws of the game. So, think of it as I'm applying the law. I, it's not what decision do I need to make. The law says this, therefore I am doing this. I'm reacting to the behavior exhibited by the player. Now I'm going to switch gears again and go to using your presence out on the field. And that can be a very big thing in game management and keeping problems down. And what do I mean? I mean letting the players know you are actively participating in the game. You are there. You see what they're doing. You, so that they don't want to try anything. For example, if I have two players pushing and shoving, I might go stand behind them. I, I, I wouldn't be against suffering in position-wise to be next to these players so that nothing happens. Or on a corner kick, move in closer. Move to this side, move to that side. Some things you can do to let the players know you're watching. Hey, number two, I see that. Number two, no pushing. Hey, I got that. I'll call it. I'll call the penalty. No, hands down. Something like that. Letting them know that you're engaged. You see what's going on. Actively get to the spot of the foul. Blow your whistle. Run. Point. Get there. Be at the spot of the foul. The players know you're there. They see you. Let's not try anything. Because the referee's there. No, you really need to be actively engaged or participating in the game so that the players know you're there so that they're not going to try anything because they'd be too afraid that you're going to catch something that they're doing. So, it, so it's letting them know you're there. 
That's what using your presence out on the field is. And now again, we're going to switch gears and we're going to the tactical area and dealing with parents and youth matches. And this could be a minefield for referees. Let's start with the tactical area and in particular the coach, the coaching staff, and how, how I like to deal with it. I like to use, and U.S. Soccer recommends that you use Ask, Tell, Dismiss. It's a three-tiered response to deal with behavior out on the field. The first is Ask. You're going to ask the coach, or you're going to ask who's doing the behavior to stop. Whatever it may be. Hey coach, I am asking you to stop yelling at me. You've asked him. You come back. And this, you really need to be, Coach, I am telling you to stop yelling at me. If I have to come back here, most likely you are going to be... Le it's not most likely. It don't get stuck on tell, tell, tell. Coach, if I come back here, you're leaving. Then you come back. Coach, you, I'm telling you to leave now, or you have been asked to leave. There we go. Easy. That's it. Ask, tell, remove. If I have to... Go through those steps. When I get to remove, they're leaving. And do you need to have a thick skin? To a certain extent, yes. But don't let people be a, dis a distraction. Ask, tell, remove. Now, when you, ha you have your AR, how much do I want them to be involved in the process? Well, I normally give... You can't have them in the remove. They can't remove someone. They can't dismiss them. I give them ask and tell. I tell them, you call me over. The person is probably leaving. Or the person is leaving. So, you ask them, you tell them, you call me over they're leaving. And I do tell them it doesn't mean that I'm not going to come over if I hear something that I don't like. But if, they're, if something's going on that they don't like, ask, then tell, call me over then, and we will remove the person if those first two steps don't work. Because they don't need to be a distraction. Now we're going to dealing with the parents in youth matches, especially. A lot of times they're intermingled with the coaches. They're right there with the coaches. So the, I, I believe the correct technical answer would be to go up to the coach, have the coach deal with the issue, and go from there. Here's a better response. What I, make sure the coach hears you. But deal with it. If guy in the red hat is sitting behind the coach and he's dissenting the referee or he's making it unpleasant, go up, make sure the coach hears you. Hey, coach, listen for a sec. Sir, I'm not going to have this anymore. I'm asking you to stop. Coach hears, he hears. Yeah. Then we're going to go to the tell... Sir, I'm telling you, no more. I come back, you're leaving. The coach hears it, he hears it. If I come back, the person is leaving. Not the coach. Why not the coach? Because whose behavior is bad? Is the coach's behavior bad? No. The, the person behind him's behavior is bad. So he's the, the guy in the red hat would be the one leaving. 
at that at that point. Now, if he doesn't want to leave, fine, then I leave. When you dismiss someone, whether it be the coach or the person sitting behind the coach or whatever, they don't leave, I leave. And this is how I'm going to do it. If I go up to issue a dismissal, I dismiss the person, I pick up the ball, I move back to the center circle or towards the center of the field, and I wait. If they don't leave, I leave with my crew. And the game isn't happening anymore. Now how long do I wait? I typically give about two minutes. Something that you do not want to do. Don't stand next to the touchline and provoke them. Don't go, coach, you better leave. Coach, you're leaving. Let's go. Move it. No. Move back and wait. If they're not going to leave, I'm going to leave. End of story. I dismiss someone, I'm waiting for them to leave. Typically they leave. I've had the deal, I've terminated one match. I've ended a match once. Don't be afraid to have to do that. If the problem is out of control and it's not getting any better, do not feel bad about terminating the match or abandoning the match. If you have to. you have to do it, do it. Now, the last subject in this is head injuries. We're going to be dealing with head injuries and how I want and the procedure, so you notice someone bang heads and they fall to the ground. That's an immediate whistle. Blow your whistle, call the coach out of the field, let that happen. Now if they get up right away, they're running around thumb. But we need to be cautious about head injuries because they're serious. That, is a ser that could be a very, very serious problem. We don't want to deal with it. So we call the coach. We're, we note it. We write the game report if they don't return. There we go. We're done with that. Because we really do not want to have to be the one to go wait and something really bad's happened. So, an instant you suspect a head injury, I don't care if they're on a breakaway. Beep! Call the coach and get that taken care of. The head injury is more important at that point. So, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for watching. I know this was short, but this is supposed to be just a quick little informational type lecture. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Justin McBride.